sorry, everybody to relax right now. We all have put in work for this show. We most definitely have been struggling these few months. And may I say that you all have done a wonderful job. Thank you. You all look wonderful today. You all sound great. You all look great. I am very proud of you. Okay? That set looks wonderful. You all did a wonderful job. All right. Take your time, everybody. To me, drama is about... To me, drama is a way... Theater and drama to me. Drama to me means, um... Drama is life? Question <laughs> mark? <laughs> drama is basically my whole life. It's about telling stories that people will be able to relate to through the ages. I guess it's kind of my favorite part of school. Uh, I don't know, drama is like... It's a sense of security. Like, the people in drama are your family. So, with Grease, that was my first show, and after Grease, I kind of fell out of love with drama. To express yourself in different ways, and to learn about uh, various kinds of people um, through all of your different characters. And I decided to give it another shot, um, sophomore year with Into the Woods, and after that I just completely knew that drama was for me and it's what I wanted to do. It is a way of channeling feelings and looking at the world in a different way. To me, drama is like a lot of fun stuff. It's like meeting really cool people and then those cool people become your friends. And then you get to act on stage with your friends. And it's super fun. I, f I feel that drama and acting is meant to imitate life.
up there, I was just, I don't know, I was kind of nervous. I was like focusing on my breathing and just trying not to worry too much. Oh, it was pretty nerve-wracking. I mean, it always is auditions. I always get nervous right beforehand, but I thought it was okay. For singing auditions, most of the time I try to pick um, four or five different songs that I think all characterize different um, parts of the show. Um, maybe if there's a main character that has to perform a certain song in a certain way, I'll put part of that song in the audition. Um, most of the time I try and have a few songs for guys, a few songs for girls, and maybe one song for everyone to do together. For each person, I gave them the basic standard was a plus, a zero, or a minus. A plus was I thought they did a good job. Zero was you know maybe they were average or they didn't show it, but they didn't show it badly. And minus was there was nothing there. Like for stage presence, a minus would be they had a, a stone face and they didn't do anything to make themselves look more alive. Some people get multiple pluses and then some people get multiple minuses.
callbacks for girls, um, I looked more specifically at certain characters. Um, I think I pulled a song for Tracy. Um, I think I had them sing a little bit of a Velma song or an Amber song because that's when I'm really starting to pare down who would be the best for which role because certain um, characters require a certain type of voice and a certain way that people sing. So we just have to, you know, hear all of them sing it and then, you know, pick the one that would work the best. For the guys, there were some very, very high notes for a guy in some of the songs. So um, during callbacks, I made them all sing the song, uh, just a piece of Seaweed's song. I can't see why people look at me and only see the color of my face. And then there's those that try to... That's a very, very high note for a guy to sing. So I just went down the line. I was like, everyone needs to try this. Do it in falsetto. I want you to try. I'll try. Thank you. Did it in that tone the whole song? Or just... No, I mean, that's, that's the right note. Okay. That's how high it is. <laughs> Only a few were able to do it, but you know, that was a good way for me to pare down who would be seaweed. Being backstage is like when you're like running the show and stuff, it's it's empowering and it makes you feel like you're really contributing to something because the people in the audience are kind of like relying on you to make the show great. Do I have everyone for props? So for the beginning we're going to be working with other groups. Um, once, we, once it gets later in the year we're going to be doing actually lighting stuff and we'll be mostly fixing lights, re-aiming lights. I make all of the colors for the show, and then I, with those colors that I make, I paint things with them. My name is Malia Womack, right? And I'm head of construction. construction. There we go. I helped to design and like build the set and everything, and basically the actors 
would be nothing without me. <laughs> I like, okay. What's gonna happen? We have to leave yes. a clear yes. path big enough for, you know, people to walk through. Whether oh, to get to the staircase. Yeah. Are you getting up there? Or to it, I'm extremely dedicated to it, and I've made such awesome friends, and I talk about them all the time, and I talk about, you know, oh, you wouldn't guess what happened at Tech today, or guess what he said, guess what she said, or whatever. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I just talk to my parents about that type of stuff all the time. Okay, in the four of us, we're going to be pulling props, because we got a lot of stuff to look for. So, I have the list completed list this time. I know some of the stuff we're not going to find, some of the stuff we need to make. I joined drama last year as a freshman and I honestly wasn't entirely sure if I was going to get totally involved, let alone as involved that I am now. Okay. How late is I remember going in the very first day and um, being absolutely terrified because I was like one of the only freshmen in the room of a bunch of upperclassmen and it was only like the fourth week of school or something so obviously freshman Emma was just freaking out and worried about talking to new people yeah yeah okay we can use this for a volleyball net of sorts put the basketballs in the tenant rack. Okay, everything up on this shelf is gonna be used for the gym. <laughs> because we need to find a way to turn the stage into a gym without building too much stuff because we only have a month and a half till show. We only have a month and a half till show. gelatin material with colors in it. Now it's just plastic, but it's still called gel. Um, they're kind of strange colors. That one doesn't even have anything in it, but we're going to be using these. 
So, does everyone know, give or take, what Hairspray is about? No. All right. You, you can't remember the 60s. Do you know the kind of style of the 60s? It was very poppy. It was, like, colorful. Hairspray is set in the 60s. In fact, one of the songs is called Welcome to the 60s. It's kind of a title song. Um, it's, it, it's very poppy. It's very colorful. And hopefully the set will reflect that. But in general, it's our job to make it colorful, make it poppy. And one of the ways we're going to do that is have fancy spotlights. So when I was very, very little, um, when I was 10, I did my first show as a lighting technician. So I, all I was doing at the time was pressing the go button over and over and over again at the right time. But the ability to change the whole mood of the scene and change the color and the tempo and all the aspects of the scene that make it interesting from one click of the button is what drew me to lighting. But there, there are a couple different controls for the spotlight. This big red handle controls the size. So if you can see, it's changing the size. There's this red thing around it. And if I make it bigger, I can kind of flatten it out into a rectangle. And that's useful if you've got lots of people on stage and you want to get a spot and you want to get light on all of them at once. So if we have a big group number, we might use that. Probably not. Um, so we're probably going to leave it in circle. There's, let me turn this off first. There's another control along this side, which is this red handle, and it twists out and twists in, and then you can push it along. And what this does is it focuses and defocuses the light. So now that you kind of see, I'm like shifting it back and forth, and it's making the edges of the light sharper and more diffuse on either side. And then in the center, it's relatively sharp. Um, we're probably going to leave that in the center because it's relatively sharp. It depends on what I'm going for. We'll see. One, if not, ooh, don't touch that. Uh, we will probably have at least one, or if not two, people running these spots. We have two of them. One of them would go on that side of the um, balcony. One of them would go on this side, and they could do the figure eight thing that you've seen, and it'll all end up in the middle. It would look cool. Um, it'll probably be whoever is willing to dedicate a lot of time towards the show. 
So the way our rehearsal schedule works, we have a lot of these tech rehearsals, and as they get closer to the show date, they get a lot closer together. And for the two weeks, I guess the first, the week before the show, and the week before that, I think, the week right before the show is called Hell Week. And the reason is, it feels like hell. Painfully fantastic. I would say... Crazy. Family. I would say it's agonizing. It's um, it's, it's tiring, we're here. I'm here off until 11. Most everyone else disappears after around 9. But we rehearse the whole show every day that week. Or the vast majority of the show every day. And we're finishing it up, trying to get rehearsals to happen. And it's horrible. It's when everything else falls apart. But it's wonderful. It it's really is a lot of fun. It's a lot of adrenaline. It's, um, it's kind of what theater kids live for. It's, yeah. <laughs> You got it! Okay. Costume change is backstage, you guys. I don't think, I don't think really? you guys have any room. Really you have fast. to help us. <laughs> okay. There's gonna be a division of Run Crew specific. Just for your costume. Really? Because it's not just you, it's gonna be like everyone except for like ensemble. We're gonna have to help change. Okay. Okay. Creativity doesn't just apply to like me making costumes, it applies to me trying to figure something out or just me being around other people and especially considering like the dynamics of the people in drama I think it also brings a lot of social skills I know I definitely was a lot more outgoing because of it and I also knew how to have like different relationships like a relationship with the director is different from a relationship with your friend or castmate You see what you see? Around. Do you want to make the boys get it out now? Yeah. Can I walk behind it? Malik? Not really noticeable. We just still have to be a gap to keep this together. Okay, so then it would be. If like, we're going to cut it out and make it right. Yeah. Um, so and then you'd have to cut in. Uh, I'm still a little confused how. What would that be? That wouldn't yeah. be That's the nozzle. Okay, that wouldn't be light. That okay. would be darkness, yes. That so would all be... of this would be darkness. So you'd actually cut the can out and make a little um like ending in the can. So then it would be still metal. Try that. Do you wanna try that? Yeah. Alright. Let me go talk to you. I have like no art. Still Corny Collins. Where are we putting this no one? On the top. On the top. Move that over. So, this is going to be a long <laughs> rehearsal day, and we're going to have to work in sections with some people at some times, while other people are sitting quietly waiting. Yes, you all understand that. So, if you have homework, do your homework over there. If you have a book to read, wonderful. If you don't, please don't talk. <laughs> Yeah, and then we'll do it with the music, okay? Alright. The songs are fun. You got to do that movie and sing and like dance. I mean, I really like the dance. I don't like dancing, so that's more fun. It's like fun. Like, like, you know, like, all the dance right now. Yeah. 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 I love it more than her. I'm a winner. Be me. I can be whoever I want to be. And this year, I'm going to be Little Inez. 
So I'm gonna be the best of all Inez anyone has ever seen in my life. I feel kind of nervous. Uh, kind of, uh, kind of like JP's in the way. Uh, I'm also kind of excited because it's the show. And it's coming up, and then we're gonna perform, and it's gonna be great. And then we'll be super scared and nervous, though. And then it'll be done, and we don't have to be scared and nervous anymore. And that will probably be the last few weeks. I keep hugging you. said calm. I said that. Yeah. It's a prop. It's a prop. It's a prop. Can't you do the balloon? No. Okay, do you want to talk to me? I don't, I don't know if we can. No, there's no one in here. Oh, all the teachers, all the teachers that would have them aren't there. Yeah, it's okay. My brother's a very lonely guy. I can't get confused. Just kidding. Just kidding. Records. 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 <laughs> you know that, right? Oh, you are. This is a record. Already this is a 45. Already this is Happy Hawaii. This is a 45. When she talks about a 45, and I said she needs to bring in a 45, this is what she's going to bring in. Oh, okay, so we can't use those other records for... You can't uh, use that for them, too. But she should bring in one of these. Oh, I didn't know these were real. So when it says 45 new. rotations per minute, that's what, that's what makes it a 45. Okay. Just so you know, this is a real record. No, this is a 45 is a single. This is one song. Mm. Do you guys not live in like... 99. 1999. You were born in 99? 1999 is when I was born. You weren't even born when I graduated high school. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> something or like why are you here and it's like oh I have rehearsal after um but I mean I've gone through as every high school has I've gone through really dark times in my life and there have been times when the only thing that I felt made me happy or the only thing that I felt made life worth living at all was drama those days where I was really at school late, I would get home at maybe like 11 o'clock, and I would drink a cup of coffee, I'd do my homework, and then go to sleep, sleep at some absurd time. 
I would go to school the next day feeling terrible, but I would still go because I knew that I could come to tech like after school. And I, I don't know, it was kind of addictive actually. The classes that I was in, it was a lot of work. And I mean, I enjoyed it, but not as much as I enjoyed going to drama after school because it was like downtime and then everybody there is like a family. So it was like what I looked forward to during the day. My dad is an actor, and so growing up, most of the time, I would go into work with either of my parents, and I most of my memories from childhood are of going to the theater with him, and he's also like um, a tech director, and I would love everything about it. I loved being backstage, I loved being on stage, um, so I think I never really questioned that theater was going to be something I would get involved with. Oh, don't make me wait one more moment for my life to start. Good morning, good morning, waiting for my life to start. I love you, Baltimore. Every day is like an old man. Every night is a fantasy. Every sounds like a symphony. <laughs> I promise Baltimore that someday when I leave I see Gonna wake up and see Secret. Come, come on, come on, come on, and then my council girls like, come out, and then we do this like little Tina Turner. Yeah, it's like, here we go. It's like proud Mary. When Hairspray came around, I really didn't have an excuse because I knew the show and I knew all the songs and I just wanted to be a part of it so much. So I auditioned that year and I wasn't going out for any particular part. I just wanted to be in the show and I ended up getting cast that same week. And it really meant a lot to me because um, that was my first role as a lead. And I don't know how many people knew that. A lot of people probably didn't know that, but that was my first lead role or speaking role on stage. And it, it was just, Experience. I'm, I'm, I met a whole lot of people that I didn't really think I would ever meet or become friends with or know, but it was all thanks to the drum department. And for the rest of the year, you know, I had friends, I had people to talk to, you know, for like the first time. It's always nice out here. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, well, now that it's getting darker earlier. Really. Yeah. So, so it's actually so for my birthday. Guys, I'm guitar there. Basically, we'll have them yeah, center. Yeah, that's like, true. There'll be like lines about like, come on, let's dance, everybody. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So Tracy will be center and you'll be on. Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right. Five, six, seven, eight, one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. 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 Five, six,
I am so distraught right now. I'm so distraught and I'm so like, I'm just mentally and emotionally and physically drained right now. And I'm trying to calm down and I'm trying to be a, a team player. And I'm, I think I'm doing a pretty good job. They think I'm not, but you know, no, no, it doesn't. It's okay. You guys are gonna get through it. <laughs> I wish people wouldn't lose their stuff or throw their stuff around. But I love this act. Just, well, I want to kill them. It's like a balance. Like, I just really want to hug them and love them. And then I also want to throw them in the like, dungeon. I want to be like, best friend. But at the same time, I like, want to take their heads. At the same time, I have to yell at them because they're not bringing in their costume. Oh, yeah. That's what Megan does. Everybody says Megan is a yeller. And I have to come in and be like, but we still love you guys. We'll continue no, yelling. It's not like I'm yelling just because I'm like, I'm power hungry. It's because, like, at this point in the show, they need to get their stuff together, which Mr. M talked about. Cool. We love actors. Sometimes. Okay, now, do you feel energized? Yes. Did you sweat? If you didn't sweat, you didn't give it your all. Now, imagine, imagine, curtain opens, there you are, production number for the first song out. Everybody knows exactly what's gonna go on. Even people who don't know anything about the show. They know it's set in the 60s by the way the music sounds. Or it's at least imitated in the 60s. They're gonna see what? Hair. Your hairdo and your clothes. Folks, I was alive. <laughs> in the early 60s. In fact, my teenage brother, who was 13, used to have dance parties in our basement. And the music that, he, that they played to dance to was a lot like this. It was a very innocent time. In the next two years, Kennedy will be shot. The Cuban Missile Crisis will take place. There's an invasion in the Bay of Pigs, I think. I mean, if you look on Wikipedia at the at the chronological order of things that happened in 1962. It was a very innocent time. Everybody was all about themselves. That's why the hairdos, you had time to spend on yourself. They probably had nails done too, not like they do nails nowadays, like you sat there with your nail polish and painted two or three colors. Because you had time, it wasn't a hurried, congested world. It's full of innocence and excitement. And you guys have to be excited to be teenagers. The hardest thing there is to do is to play someone your own age. Because you can't act outside of yourself very far. It's easier to play somebody old, right? Right? It's easier to play somebody old than it is to play somebody your own age. That's why you've got to try harder. All right, shall we go to nicest kids? There is a stigma of being a drama kid, but I also hold that reputation with pride and with joy because it's a part of my identity and I appreciate what it's given me. So I'm not ashamed of being an art kid or a drama kid. The most common thing when I tell people I'm going into the arts is, oh, so you're not gonna get a real job ever? I'm not ashamed of it at all. And I will own up to the fact that like, yes, I realize I'm going into a field that I'm not going to, I'm not gonna like make it in the world as much as I would if I was like an engineer or something. But the fact that I'm able to do what I love more than anything, I don't, I can't think of anything better than that. Yeah. 
there's a lot of stigma, but you know, I wear it with pride. I mean, I'm definitely a drama geek. You know, for it's more than about us just getting on stage and you know showing off our talent. This changed my life. Like, if I hadn't gotten cast in this show, I don't know really where I would be. I think it's just the way that they see us and we interact with each other because we're more open with each other and we're comfortable around each other. So I think when they see us being our like full selves when they come to drama functions, it makes them uncomfortable, I guess. Which I don't, I don't personally get because I feel like if you see a bunch of people around you being like 100% themselves, it should make you feel like you can be 100% yourself. But I think that if people were to actually realize that they wouldn't view drama kids as such weirdos. You guys, can you guys, you guys are gonna carry that all the way down, down. all the way to the corner, buddy, and over and hey, hey. Back back. Hey, oh, hey, all right, hey, guys, it's not going to be a delicate, but it's going away. Oh, yeah. Bring it this way. Bring it this way. Hey, just like you. Look <laughs> like we doing something. I appreciate it. Mr. Buzzer in 2015. You do it. my name. Yeah, we need to be wrong. If you walk forward, we're going to lost power. I'm trying to hit your You This is good. On the edge. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Now and right. the one should go. go in, right? Ah, there should be two in the top, two in the bottom. All right. I mean, Battery's dying. Alright, can we just work on the other one then before this yeah. these guys? We got this, one this in is each. pretty good. This yeah, we got good. one in each. Right. I mean, unless we go through a hurricane. Straight. Battery's dead. 
Cool. There you go. I'm mean, gonna switch the bits. That's not the bit, that's this yeah, thing. No, yeah. It just doesn't have enough power. So it kind of sucked today, but that's just because it's Monday. Like, it's actually like Halloween's pretty awesome. Um, it's, it's exciting. This is not. So we're here. You guys, all, this is where all your hard work pays off. But there's more hard work to come, okay? This is how we, we've made it, all right? Tonight, if your parent isn't prepared, please tell your parent to pick you up at 10. I think that's about when we'll be done. Okay, that's at night. You will get a dinner break. During dinner break, you do not leave. You go here, there'll be food. Or if you brought food, you can go to my room and heat it up. But that's it. You don't leave the building. Before we do anything else, and I do have a bunch of cast stuff I want you to do. Before we do anything else, we're all gonna sing a warm-up song together. Okay? The warm-up song goes like this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lon. Happy birthday to you. Good. I'm braiding her hair for the wig. Yeah. Run, head. What's this? I really don't know. What is this? This is the receiver for the um, wireless microphones. Got your soundboard. Got your wireless microphones. We're getting everybody mic'd up so we can do a, a walkthrough with the microphones. A couple people sing. We're trying to get it together. Yes, hopefully, because one of the main things that people like to remind me is that I sing too low. So I really need this mic to really get it there. And you know the pit, they are on point, so they be they they don't need to be a real mic for real. But for me, I need to be mic so I can they can hear me over the pit. It's so beautiful, man. Noah, it's like a, an amazing day. And Mr. Am should give us like an hour to just play football. Yes! I'm 
feel like one, once you're in, once you've entered Hell Week, like in a show, you may not have been as close with your cast and crew like previously in the rehearsal process, but once you're spending that much time with everyone, it's like you have no choice but to just be completely like together and bonded and it's, I love it. It's pretty much the last moment when you've gone through everything you possibly can up into this point. Close main. Main. Main is still stuck. Yes, we told you main is stuck because there's a wood piece. We can't open it any further. We might be able to close it, but we have to close it all the way to open it. I don't know, but now it's stuck. And because the show is, you know, in only for a few days, basically, everything seems like it is going to happen. These are my grades in the first two quarters. Doing pretty well. And then there's like this little dip, a pretty big dip, when Halloween comes, and then they have to like slowly resurface back to where they were before. But it, honestly, I always justify to myself that it's worth it. Seeing that late at school, it does kind of like tire you out. Like you would have the, the like Angie would go on um, car rides to Starbucks to get everybody coffee so that we didn't fall asleep during the day. I honestly don't remember any of the Hell Weeks in the past couple of years and I think it's just my brain cutting out a traumatic memory. traditions I know you're gonna start in a second all I want to say is I am beyond proud of you the show is amazing you have worked really really hard and now is where it all pays off we have sold 500 seats already just in pre-sale so you're gonna have a nice big audience today Take that energy and start feeding on it. As soon as Green Room starts, that's when I'm going to ask all of you backstage to turn off the phones and electronics. Turn them all the way off. I'm, before you leave tonight, I just want to say this now, before you leave tonight, those dressing rooms are clean, especially the ladies, but especially the boys too. They are spotless. I remind you, no food and drink. All your stuff picked up and put away, and then we're ready to go, and then you're back here at five again tomorrow. I'm really nervous. I, a big you know, it's a really dumb idea. Uh, I had like three sips of Red Bull, which is the worst idea. Um, I'm really afraid I'm gonna forget everything. If it messes up, it's all on me. And that that's gonna follow me, or that anything up here is gonna follow me, or I'm gonna die in a can. Besides, that the play's gonna be great! Ah! Alright, right. everybody clap your eyes. Close your eyes. I want everybody to relax right now. We all have put in work for this show. Mm -hmm. We most definitely have been struggling these few months. <laughs> and may I say, that you all have done a wonderful job. There's so much, I would say, anxiety and excitement all trapped all in this one room. So much buildup of energy from the entire time since you started the show. It's, again, with the, the family part of Hell Week, it just brings a cast and a crew so close together. Um, I mean, the fact that it's a small, a small space, like area-wise, that, of course, adds to it. And then mixed with the nervousness of it being, like, especially on the first night, it being the first night of the show, uh, it's just, it's there's so much hype in Trapped in One Room, and so much like emotion and passion. Cast, you all sound great, you all look great. I am 
I'm very proud of you guys. Yeah.
too. I got you the head <laughs> award. <laughs> okay, and then okay. Scott. We got this one for Scott because you got Scott. the God <laughs> award. <laughs> Check out, check out the big pin drop in the suit. Thank you. It was a great